hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel and in this video we will be talking about the interview questions asked by deloitte from one of my students who has around three years of experience this is a recent interview last month only and uh, uh, student has shared all the questions with me so i have noted them down and we're going to discuss each and every question one by one by uh, in case if you want just the questions i'm going to put it in the description box so that you can get them from there all right so uh, interview started with uh, introduction and then the question was the first question was about best practices to follow while creating profiles in salesforce okay now this sounds a very easy question but trust me when some um, out of the box kind of question comes in in the interview as a first question then it kind of takes the candidate in the in the back foot this is one such kind of questions because this is uh, not a conventional question we do not get these kind of questions very often profiles are very important in salesforce and when we create profiles there are a couple of good practices we need to follow like profiles should only be created when they are absolutely necessary salesforce is moving towards more in the permission set zone where we want to extend permissions via the permission sets so we need to make sure that whenever we are creating profiles we need to have an absolute necessity of creating them then we have to follow the least permissive uh, permissions like we should only give the permissions which are absolutely necessary we need to be very careful about that okay profile should have a standard naming convention followed by the company they should not have a random name like sales profile one sales profile two no they should have a common name and that should tell that what that profile is supposed to do or supposed supposed to provide they should have a description as well if you are following that pattern okay if we are using the ip restrictions and uh, uh, login hours then we should be provided as well okay uh, think about also uh, kind of securing or the fields which are very sensitive the fields which is stores the sensitive data we need to be very careful about providing access to them system permissions sh should be uh, revisited or we need to make sure that we are not providing anything like uh, manage users or view setup so those kind of permissions should be thoroughly checked we also need to make sure that we are not giving view all permissions or view uh, or the modify all permission to any profile okay because these are very uh, permissive permissions uh, so these are the kind of things we need to make sure we follow when we create the profile okay there can be many but uh, yeah two three uh, at least two three best practices if you provide that will be sufficient and will be a good beginning for the such kind of questions then second question was decorators what are decorators in lwc why do we use them decorators are special annotations in javascript which we use to um, bind the data or to expose our data or to get data from salesforce there are multiple purpose because there are different decorators we have track we have api and we have wire if they explain if they ask further explanation try to explain each of these decorators a very common follow-up question on these kind of question is that why we still use track decorator when all the properties are reactive by default i have created a separate video for that you can watch that uh, and you can get the answer of that question as well here that question was not not answered uh, no not asked it was just a simple decorator question to set up the tone of the interview third question was what is wrapper class in apex okay this is a very important interview question and wrapper classes are very important concepts altogether uh, when we talk about the apex wrapper classes as the name suggests holds the wrapper of different different data types okay so let's say from salesforce if you have to return one bucket but that should have a different different uh, data like let's say a record of opportunity a record of contact and a list of cases now in a single return statement if i have to return all three that cannot be done normally you have to write three different methods and uh, three different classes because one method will be uh, annotated as or enable so it will be difficult for you to do that with the help of wrapper classes you can create a custom wrapper that can have the multiple data types and then you can combine all of these data together so that is why we use the wrapper class 
I have a full video on my channel available for this topic. If you are interested, you can go through that. I am going to put all the relevant link in the comment box for you all. Okay. Uh, fourth question is a very good question. Question is, can we use any other keyword except data and error in the in wire? Okay, so in LWC when we use wire and then we try to get the data from Apex, in return we use the data and error for the um, uh, to get the data. Okay, so question is, is data and error are the fixed name or can we use any other name like let, let's say I call it data2 or error2 or my data, my error. Can we do that? So answer is no, we cannot do that. This is a fixed property. So to explain it properly, I've written a definition for you. Salesforce, while using wire, Salesforce automatically provides a response object with two specific properties, data and error. Okay, so they cannot be changed. They are fixed keys in response object. That is why you cannot do that. However, when we use the imperative call, there we are using promises generally in promises we use the result and error okay but that is not fixed so you can use my result my error when we use imperative because that is promise and you are free to use your own uh, key there or your own name there so with imperative you can do that but normally with wire we have to use the data and error okay so that is how you are going to explain it avoid uh, just giving one liner answer like somebody could have said that okay no we cannot do that but if you will explain it properly then it will create more impact remember we are giving interview to create impact it is uh, it is very common that you are able to answer all the questions yet you did not get selection because you might not have created the impact other candidates are creating with the kind of answers they are giving so when competition is high, we'll have to make sure that we are not just answering, but also creating impact by that answer. Okay. Then uh, there was a question on explain data model for B2B portal or, or uh, bus business model, B2B business model. So we have to uh, explain here how B2B model is different from B2C model. B2C model is business to consumer like we are selling it to normal customers retail customers whereas in b2b we are selling to businesses so here our customer is not a single customer but a business so the way those objects will work will be different okay those are the objects like like let's say if we are in salesforce uh, in the sales cloud we are going to use account contact opportunities and everything but the way we are using them will become different now our customer is account rather than the customer rather than the contact so our customer is account and then on on that account there will be multiple contacts so let's say you are dealing with another vendor that vendor will have multiple contacts and your relationship with that vendor and then those contacts with vendor will be very different so b2c is where you are selling to customer whereas b2b is where you are selling to businesses only okay so that is how data model is also going to be changed this was this is just more to explain in terms of business rather than uh, in the salesforce term okay uh, object will remain same but the way we are using them will be changed okay uh, then there was a question about SQL query to fetch all the accounts where there is no contact and this is a very common SQL query. Like I have seen this query getting repeated uh, with many of my own students. Okay, so you have to write SQL query normally and use the NOT clause. Uh, in, the, in the WHERE clause, use uh, another sub query where you find all the contacts which does not have any account ID. Okay. I will write down the query in the comment box if you have not seen my interview question of the day because I have already created this uh, uh, I think a couple of months ago. Then there was a question on can we use LWC components in experience builder? Yes, we can definitely use it. All we need to make sure is that we have included the community in the meta XML file of it. So make sure that we set the targets properly. Lightning community page and lightning community underscore default should be added as a, uh, added as a target in the meta XML file of your LWC. And then those LWC components will be visible when you do it in the community builder okay 
All right. Then there was a question about converting a lookup relationship to master detail relationship. Is it possible to convert a lookup into master detail? And the org where we are trying to do this is a live org where we have a live data. So is there any data uh, uh, data dependency on this? So to answer this, yes, it is possible to convert lookup into master detail relationship, but there is a data dependency that all childs should have parent in the master detail relationship every child will have a parent so when we are converting a lookup to master we just need to make sure that in their existing data all childs should have master if that is not the case then you will not be able to convert it because that will break the rule so we have to sort out our data first and then we will be able to do that there are some more dependency as well like this object should not be standard it should not be parent of any other object those kind of things also needs to be done but from the data dependency point of view this was the point you needed to answer in this question okay and then interviewer asked candidate to write the trigger to count the number of contacts on an account this is a very classic roll up summary trigger and i think uh, in my own career i have seen this question at least 20 times and and this is the case with like i think 2015 16 this question is running in the circle so i also have a full video on this where we have created this trigger from scratch you can check out this is a very easy trigger um, next question was can we do this via flow very much 100 percent we can do it via flow in fact even if interviewer is not asking, you can tell that this can be pretty much easily achieved via flow. So yes, we can do that. Next question was, what are the different types of flows we have? There are multiple flows we have. We have screen flow, we have water launch flow, we have platform event triggered flow, uh, we have record triggered flow. These are four or five main types of flows we use and uh, you need to explain when to use which one and then there will be further couple of cross questions on flow there was uh, uh, like when to use and what kind of record triggered flow you have created what kind of auto launch flow you have created but mostly on the theoretical part then there was a question on trigger versus flow like how and when to use trigger versus when to use flow okay I have I have done this question multiple times uh, when to use triggers versus when to use flow so let me first start with telling you what not to answer most of the people in this question say that when business scenario is very easy or very normal we do it via flow when business scenario is complex we do it via trigger <coughs> I'm not saying this is wrong but there are certain things you need to remember like like this is not a definitive answer this answer is not telling anything this answer is not explaining your understanding of trigger versus flow like how generally you decide between trigger versus flow like you saw a requirement you see that okay this is easy i'll do it via flow generally how how uh, companies do it uh, first on a high level they'll have certain rules on decide uh, to decide on when to use flow versus when to use trigger like we'll start something with flow if that can be achievable without much of the headache okay so flow is uh, is a very good tool it's not like it can only be used for easy scenarios first of all easy is very subjective something uh, easy for you might not be easy for others same goes for difficult flow can very well do the difficult things as well iterating over multiple objects that can very easily be done on the flow so difficulty part for now let's just not say that for easy thing we will do flow we can say that flow is a very good tool non-coding tool we can do most of the things with the flow and uh, uh, we need not to write the test classes if we are going with the flow and flow is very easy to build very easy to manage even salesforce administrator can do so for long term it is a very good practice uh, to write something with the flow where does flow fails is when we'll have to have um, let's say on, on an account object we'll have to iterate through opportunity line item and even the inner object of it 
creating that map part and navigating through that map in the inner loop to loop will become very difficult in the flow because of the complexity it will add in the flow so builder will look very difficult in that scenario when we want more control over our code uh, or when we want more control on how we are going to write that then we go towards the uh, apex side now there also we have an option to combine the flow and apex and use it for that purpose flow is bulkified by default so we can combine that power along with the capability to call apex from flow and then do that okay so it very much depends on scenario to scenario but do not generalize it by saying that for easy thing i will do flow for difficult thing i will go with apex okay flow can also very well do difficult things okay and especially if your interviewer is a flow enthusiast he will uh, he will definitely drill you or grill you down on that point on easy versus difficult so do not go over easy versus difficult as a candidate your role is not to pick one over the other as a candidate or even as a salesforce consultant your role is what tool suits that particular situation best okay we will go situation versus situation wise and then we'll see what is a better tool for that okay but generally we'll start with the flow and try to take advantage of that if some if we come up or if we encounter something which cannot be done with the flow there are very few things which cannot be done with the flow or if we come up in a situation where flow is becoming really complex and tedious and hard to navigate then also we want to get more control over things because see it's a fact that to in order to do something very complex in apex you will have to write four five line of code but in flow it could be 10 15 level of deep iteration of different elements so sometimes it is very difficult to build such kind of flows so in that case we will go with the apex flow both the tool have their advantages and disadvantages uh, not disadvantages I would say limitations we will see on the situation which limitations or which tool suits best okay so do not pick the side here be diplomatic try to say that you you choose what's best in the situation okay all right uh, can we call flow from apex that was the question Yes, we can call flow from the apex by creating the uh, new instance of new flow dot interview dot your flow name. I haven't done, I have never called flow from my apex, but for the interview sake, yes, this can be done. You can be, uh, you can do more R and D on this question and uh, uh, see that. Then the last question was how to write two way binding uh, or write a code snippet for a two-way binding okay so in the javascript side you will be creating a property and then that property will be displayed on the html but then from the html side when you change the value of it that change should also go on the javascript side so you need to either add a button or on change handler and call a function of javascript on the on change and display maybe in the console log or maybe in the debug that value is getting changed so he just wanted to understand if you know about the two-way data binding and click handlers or event handlers in general or not okay so this was not a difficult interview yet uh, uh, very good from a three-year-old developer point of view so i hope all these questions were easy for you and uh, if you get these kind of questions you will be able to explain them with full confidence